Hi, this is Mike. The purpose of this video will be to write a computer simulation to answer this question. If you roll two dice and at least one die is a two, what is the probability that both of them are a two? Let's see what happens. Let's start out with a clean project. Clean empty project, add a program to it, okay, first let me add these functions to it that I Add to all my programs just to make it work. Let's make sure it works so far. Compile and run. Yep, works so far. So let's create a variable called total win to represent the total number of times both dice were a two. And we'll call total loss the total number of times that they were not a two. We'll create RN1 and RN2 to hold two random number gener random numbers and die one and die two to represent two dice. So Visual Studio, the stock random number generators, I mean random numbers are, are really bad, so I'm going to add in some code to produce Mersenne random number generators, which are great. So I'm not gonna go into all this, but trust me, it's just for the purpose of creating random numbers. We'll let i be our counter. So let's do this experiment 10 million times. forgot that RN1 and RN2 need to be unsigned integers. So this random number generating code will return a random number between 0 and 2 to the 31st, 2 to the 32nd power minus 1, um, which is 4 billion and something. So to transform that to just the roll of a die, I'm going to divide it by 6 and take the remainder which will give me a random number from 0 to 5 and then add 1 to it so that the range is 1 to 6. So this is going to check that at least one die is a two. It's saying if die one is not a two and die two is not a two, then roll the dice again. And it'll keep doing that until at least one of them is a two. Once it escapes that do loop, we will have at least one two. So if both of them are two, we increment total win. 
buys, we, incre we increment total loss. And then once it escapes the for loop, we will have had 10 million successful outcomes. And then we will print the results. And let's not just print the total number of wins and losses, but the ratio to the total. Okay, and I ask for just any number at the end so the program pauses to let me look at the results. Compile, uh, oops, it's telling me that I forgot to initialize my variables. Frequently made mistake. Compile again. Good, and here we go. There we go. Total wins was about 907,000, which is a, about 9.08% of the total. Total losses, about uh, 90.9 million. I mean 9.09 .09 million, which is about 90.9% of the total. So, um, as you may know, 1 in 11 is about 9.09%. Here we came very close at 9.08%. So this shows that about 1 in 11 times the total number of 2's was 2. Uh, why am I even asking this question? Because on my forum at Wizard of Vegas there's about 2,000 posts arguing about this problem and I already made one video trying to explain with just dice why the answer is 1 in 11 the skeptics were not convinced so hopefully this video will provide more evidence that the answer is 1 in 11 it'll probably convince nobody nevertheless um, I wanted to give it a shot anyway so Let's say that you're skeptical and you don't believe that I drew the random numbers correctly. Let's, um, let's also create a two-dimensional array. We'll call, just call it dice. So we'll set every member of the 7x7 seven seven array equal to 0. And for every roll, we'll add, we'll increment the array according to the outcome of die 1 and die 2. Also print out the results of this array.
So here's another computer simulation. Um, and again, the total number of wins is, um, well, it really just repeated the last one. Again, 9.08%. And here's every combination of the two dice. For example, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. And it shows how many times each one happened. So you can see that all 36 combinations happened about 910,000 times each. Uh, just kind of eyeballing it. Looks like a nice uniform distribution. So I hope that video helps. Um, thank you very much.